welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing something totally different and new. First of all, my mom is here and I'm here at her house actually. Um, and a lot of you have seen her before. Her name is June. You wanna say hi everybody? Hi everybody. <laughs> um, we've had some fun videos recently over Thanksgiving. We did a shop together and I know a lot of you really enjoyed that. So if you hear some things in the background, Hazley is playing over there. Um, <laughs> so if you hear little noise if that's her but today we are going to do a cook with me and whenever my mom and I were talking about doing this um, we were talking about what we would do and I chose my total favorite as a kid and even now and um, let's see are these healthy not healthy <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing her cinnamon rolls and a fun, little funny story behind this is they're basically kind of like a cinnamon roll and a sticky bun mashed together and this is how mom always made these so whenever I hit my teen years I went out to eat one place and I got a cinnamon roll and it came out like dry without a <laughs> sticky bottom and I was like what is this <laughs> because I always thought that cinnamon rolls were sticky I didn't realize that there was sticky buns and cinnamon rolls and mom kind of mashed them together and made something that's so amazing. So all of this to say, we will do our best to type out these recipes. They are mom's recipes. So like to put them in words, I know some of it she has memorized or like she kind of wings it. And so we're gonna type it out in the description box so that you can make these yourself. So is there anything else we wanna add before we Just get started? Just a teeny history on the sticky bun is, is that I, my dad was a baker. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the ways that dad had made his sticky buns was always with the goo on the bottom and the frosting on the top. Yeah. Uh, it's not his recipe. Um, my big sister actually has passed some of her recipes on to me. So anyway, mm -hmm. um, but that's the history behind the, the sticky in, in our family. All right. so. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna be doing, she's gonna probably be doing a lot of the explaining because I've actually never made these myself. So she's gonna be kind of showing me while we're doing this. I have some idea of how, you know, you go about making things that rise and whatever, but um, it is a little bit of a process. And like I said, we'll break it down in the description box to the best of our ability. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is get hot water. And the reason why you're going to do the hot water instead of warm water is because your bowl is going to be cool. Okay. And so yeast has to be used in warm water. Okay. And so this will, you get as, you get pretty, pretty warm water, I want to call it. Oh boy. Two tablespoons of yeast go into here. And you just kind of let this bubble up for a little bit. What's the word for that? Does it make your yeast bloom? It, it's good blooming, possibility. Blooming the yeast. That's a good possibility. I don't know. But to make it activate quicker, mm -hmm. if you throw a little bit of your sugar in it, and this is one cup of sugar, sugar helps to activate yeast that much more. Oh, I can see it in there. Yep. That's really cool. So I like to put about two cups to start off with in it around that. So I've had this measured as 10 cups. I'm adding my sugar here, the rest of my sugar to it, which was one cup. Kind of just stirring that for a little bit. There is one cup of dried potatoes in here. Okay. I'm throwing that in now. So those are like like potato flakes? Yes, like potato flakes. Okay. That's what makes these so yummy, is the potatoes that are put into it. Okay. So I kind of keep putting my flour in. All right. And now I've got one cup of butter, which is actually two sticks of butter that has been softened. Four eggs going in. Okay, I've added my salt which that could be added at the beginning too. Okay, so I have everything in here. When I'm measuring it out of my bag, because I do that quite often, I'll get down to about seven scoops. I will stop my mixer and I will put on my hook. I like to start off with the paddle because the hook just takes that much more time because it's a little skinny as you will see here in a minute. And then you put the hook on. If they didn't have a mixer like this, how would they make it? Okay, if you didn't have a mixer like this, I would suggest... Um, hand mixing? You can hand mix it. Yeah, it takes a lot of oomph. But yeah, you can hand mix it. And, and if you have made, if any of you have made yeast dough before, you'll know how it all how it all kind of works with the whole fact of doing it by hand. Because here in the end, I actually do do some hand work with it. 
it's important to make sure that you kind of, that you're working in a warm atmosphere because you are working with yeast and yeast needs to be kept warm. If it's too cold, it just kind of kills it off, stops the process is what I should say. Not really kills it, it stops the process. Okay, I've poured out my dough onto the table so I can finish working all of the flour into it. One of the things that's important to do, even if your dough is sticky, is to not add a whole lot of extra flour to it because it dries out your dough. If you need anything, um, put use oil. The more fat in your baking products, the better off. Okay, and I'm working this to where it is still somewhat sticky on the top because I don't want it to be totally dry, dry. But my 10 cups are pretty well worked into there. And then I have my bowl here that I have greased. There again, you're gonna to wanna to use oils or grease. And then I am ready to put it into my proofer. If your oven has a proofer, a bread proofer, it's a great item to have. Or else just set it on the top and let it proof to where it is um, about 30 minutes. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes and my dough has risen to sticky. For the sticky part of the, of the sticky buns, I've put one and a half cups of brown sugar, a quarter of a cup of butter, two tablespoons of vanilla, and three tablespoons of water. And I just have smeared it all together here and have it ready to put my sticky buns on. So my dough has risen for about 30 minutes. And what's really nice with this dough, it's pretty resilient. And so whether it's 20 minutes and you're kind of in a hurry and you wanna make it, um, it'll make up somewhere along the way and it's, and it's, it's raising and it works out pretty good. So if the dough is too sticky, I recommend just putting a little bit of oil on your hands to work with it. Again, flour wants to dry it out a whole lot quicker. I also wanna just show you how to go about cutting dough without using a knife because a knife can just, just really get stuck in it. If you take it and you pinch it just like this, you can just divide your dough up really nice. So I am going to roll out my dough here and get started with putting all the fun stuff on the inside of it. And again, if it's too sticky for you, um, using some flour is not going to hurt a thing, but as much as possible, use some oil and I roll it into or kind of <clears throat> form it into a rectangle, a rectangle a long rectangle. There again, you can see how little I have used my rolling pin. Rolling pin. So if you don't have a rolling pin, just form it with your hands. I have melted or have butter that is at room temperature. And again, this is salted butter. Any of the butters that you're using, I would recommend to use salted because it just makes it taste so much better. Also, um, if you don't have salted butter and you just have the unsalted butter, you can use a quarter of a tablespoon of salt to mix into your butter and that will be suffice. Generally, I use a half of a half of a stick, <laughs> quarter of a cup, and smear it on here. Make it good and thick. And that's what just brings out the goodness in these things. And then I have brown sugar here and this is the part I, if you can just watch and see what I do here, I don't measure here. Um, I'm gonna stop something here. I forgot, I like to put the cinnamon down next because that goes right into that butter. If you miss it, see what I'm doing here? I've done this, I don't know how many times, missed putting it on first, but I like it on first. And just pepper it all over. Again, I'm not measuring, just pepper it. And if you're somebody who doesn't care for as much cinnamon, and go lighter. If you have a pizza cutter, works great. And there again, Addie can um, link this below. I like to make them about, oh, about a half an inch. Uh, they're a little bit more than a half an inch. Make them as wide as you would like to make them and start cutting. And I usually go through and cut them all. And then I go through and I roll them all up. Now this is where some people would roll the whole works together and then they would cut it. It's up to you however you want to go about cutting these things, but this is the way I do it. This smells so good. Like I can already smell the like 
cinnamon and brown sugar. I know, I know. It's probably the sticky part actually that I'm smelling. Now you're smelling the cinnamon and the brown okay. sugar. You are. All right, now I'm gonna roll and put them into the goo, my gooey pan. And this is what I'm looking like here. I'm spacing them, oh, about an inch apart, something like that, then they can grow together or you can um, have them rise as far as you want them to go and have them where they're individual sticky buns. This is at another spot in, in making these where you can put like a pie filling in it or a jelly where you would just kind of um, open, open it up a little bit and make mm -hmm. yourself like a little dip in there to fill it. So this would and be then the place it on top of it. And then you, would, oh yeah, word. that would and be just imagine. It is. It's delicious that way. So my oven has been on at 350, and now we will put these over there so that the heat from the oven helps to rise. So them they very kind quickly. of rise twice. They rise in they here, will. and then mm -hmm. they rise on mm -hmm. here. Okay. Yep. Okay. To let them sit and rise, it's usually about 20 minutes, something like okay. that. So we'll check it here after a bit and see how much bigger they've gotten. Okay, so these are ready to go into the oven. Nice and puffy. So it's been like 15 minutes? It's right? been about 15 minutes, okay. yeah. All right. Yep. So, so we're gonna, gonna go gonna ahead. And what's the temperature that you bake? At 350. 350, At okay. 350. All right. And again, we'll put all of these details and stuff down below. Okay. Ooh, there they are. And all that. Glory. Gooey, gooey stuff bubbling around in the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to make the frosting. And while they are cooling, yeah, it's the best time to make your frosting because we're going to cool these down to where they're just touchable. Um, it's best to frost them while when they are very warm. For the frosting, I'm one of these people who has always just like put it in the bowl and whip it up. So I am going to do my best to give you a recipe out of this. One thing I do like is I do like to use Walmart's powdered sugar. I think that their, their um, cornstarch level is a little higher. It just whips up so nice. I also like to use my um, paddle on my mixer. So this is just things I like to do. Um, frosting will still taste like frosting, but it does make a difference in the texture to me on how much it is whipped up. I'm gonna start off whipping that up. My mixer has a horrible noise. And I'm gonna start off with two cups of powdered sugar, putting that in here with some water, which I've actually put a cup in here so that I can kind of give an idea how much of it I've used so it's done and said. I'm just stopping that for just a jiff. And I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to show you that I'm putting one tablespoon of vanilla in here. I love vanilla. You just have to have vanilla going on. There again, if you have the real vanilla going on, you're going to want to go with less. But um, I just have this, just this imitation stuff. It tastes so good. So I have two cups of powdered sugar going on. I am going to measure out like another two cups and put that in. I'm kind of building a recipe here for you, if you haven't figured that out yet. I probably used an eighth of a cup of water, possibly, and because you've got butter going on, that that softness causes that um, frosting to just do its thing, and then of course, if you put a tablespoon of vanilla in there, you have that much more liquid. So it's four cups of powdered sugar that I have going on so far. And I want to see if that makes enough for my cans of cinnamon oil. So to speed up my process of cooling, I'm actually going to just take these and set them outside for a little bit because it's cool outside. They're at a point where I can literally put my hand on the bottom so it's still warm. They're, they're warm on top. It's just a nice time to put frosting on. That way it will kind of just seep into the bun, cinnamon roll, and um, <laughs> taste fantastic. Now, what I want to tell you is is that you let it cool just a little bit longer and then you can put these in the freezer and when they freeze and they come out they'll be like they were when they went in and that's the cool part about baked goods is, is that um, as soon as you're done cooling them you put them right in the freezer they will come out just like they went in anyway so these are going to be ready to devour I don't know that I'm even freezing these because We've got family coming. See the best part. Oh yes, there's the sticky, the yum, the best part.
Ugh. 